today I want to show you how to use the Sunway Photo geared head. It's the GH Pro Mark II. Now I have already done a full review on this, so this is not a review. This is purely a video to show you how to use it. So awesome for you guys that have already bought one, or maybe you just want to see how these things work. So that's what this video is all about. Let's get stuck into it. Okay, first thing is you're going to want to get this onto your tripod. So have your thread exposed. You've got a 3 8 hole under here and that'll just screw straight on. Now, if you happen to have a, a quarter inch thread on your tripod, which it shouldn't, most tripods are all 3 8 but if it does, you'll find a bush that came with it. Just put the bush into here and then you'll be able to thread it on. So we just screw it down. Pretty simple. A lot of tripods have a couple of grub screws under here to lock it down as well, so tighten those up. Now just a tip for you, with these, you don't want to tighten this down too much. If you over tighten it, then your bottom panning here will be really, really super tight. Same as if you do these grub screws up too tight. I've had the same thing with some ball heads, so it's just, a, it's just one of those idiosyncrasies that we need to know about. Right, so the next thing is you want to, you're going to want to get your camera onto here so this is just arca swiss it just slots in and tightens up now i run l brackets on all of my cameras so if you are running an l bracket that's arca swiss compatible perfect combination it does come with a quick release plate in case you're not okay i want to run through all the movements on this head we've got two panning movements sorry one over here and one down the bottom and then we've got two geared movements now, let me do the panning ones first. So your bottom one is just a simple pan, 360 degree pan, same as most ball heads. And this particular model does also come with a top pan, perfect for panoramics. Okay, so they're your two panning modes. And then we've got two geared uh, axes is here. So this one here is, is your level to get your camera level. Okay, and then this one here is to bring your camera down or lift your camera up, so your fore-aft movement. Now to make a big movement on these two geared heads, we just undo the wheel and we can make a fast movement that way. The previous model used to have some levers that you undid and then it moved, but they've updated it in this model just with the wheel. And I think it's fine. Once you, once you get it into place, you're not really using this very often. You're always using the micro adjustments on the wheel. Now it's really important that you get the orientation correct to be able to use these gears um, in, in the right axis. So the way I've got this set up, if you take a visual of that, I've got this geared axis pointing out to the right. This one is gonna face back to you and the camera is dead straight in here. So when it's set up in that orientation, it means that you can level this way and this will be your fore and aft. Any other combination, you know, it's gonna be going in the wrong direction. So make sure that you have it in that orientation and that's the way that you need to use it. So as far as um, degree of movement, the, the fore aft we've got 180 degrees, so 90 degrees each way, which is really good. And I can't remember the specs going this way, um, but I'll, I'll put that down there for you. There's plenty of markings on here too if you want to sort of work out your degrees. So that's always helpful as well. Now I just want to show you how to shoot a portrait. Now of course if you're using an L bracket it's dead easy and you know this head is perfectly suited for L brackets. We just simply do that, but if you're not running an L bracket 
then I'll show you what you got to do. And to be honest, it's a little bit sort of fiddly. I think if I wasn't running an L bracket, um, this would probably annoy me a bit. But anyway, this is how you do it. So we've got to move this 90 degrees because we only get our, we get our, the mo we get most of our movement this way. So we've then got to undo this one here, just turn the camera that way, and then we'll use this one here to come down into portrait mode. Okay, so now we would use this one here to level, and then our up and down becomes this one here. Okay, so it's not too hard, but it's certainly a hell of a lot easier with an L bracket, as you can see. Now, if you wanted to shoot a panoramic from here, you would use the bottom leveling base to spin around that way. And of course, as you can see, this is the same as the ball head, just sort of hanging way out here, so it's really not ideal for panoramics. So let me lift this up and I'll just go through how to shoot a panoramic for you. Okay, so if you want to shoot a panoramic and we're shooting in, in the vertical mode, and as I said, really easy with an L bracket. There is a bubble underneath here, so if you want to get everything perfectly level, then you can do it via that. And then it becomes very simple by just using this top panning base. So there's numbers all marked on here. So we would just swing through our panoramic like that. Now, in reality, we don't always have a camera absolutely dead level when we shoot a panoramic. So what I've found when I shoot panos is you know, quite often what happens is I've got the camera pointed down a little bit. So then if I swing through here, what it does is it does a big sort of dippy. And uh, when you get to these, these points here, it's then very hard to actually level it. So I prefer to pan off the bottom base. So what I do is I have it level. And then I would just pan through here, like so. And then I use the level on the camera. So I might get to a point where if it has come out of level a fraction, then I can just tweak it here on this gear. So it's still really easy. Um, and yeah, look, nine times out of 10, I'm panning off the bottom, not off the top. Right, uh, if you're pretty serious about your panos and you like to use a nodal rail, then this head works absolutely perfect. So we'll just slip one of these in and I'll show you how that works. So with a nodal rail, we put him into here. We then put our camera on top. Now we need to do some testing for the particular lens, but you'll have a, you'll have a marking in that'll tell you how far back to slide the lens. And then what that does is it puts the nodal point of the lens over the axis, the pivot axis here. So when we swing through our panoramic, we're not getting any parallax error. So if your head is completely level, then you can pan through the top one. If it's not, if it's pointing down a little bit, then you can still use the rail and pan through the bottom one. Okay, so perfect head for shooting panos. So look, that's about it. It's pretty simple, really. The main, the main key thing is just get the orientation correct at the start, and then you know, this will all make sense. Look, if you do have any questions, just fire below with a comment and I'll get right back to you. Now, it's starting to look quite nice out here. It's just about sunset time. Um, this is Queenscliff, Victoria, my hometown. And uh, I'm going to say goodbye and take some photos, maybe even a panoramic. Catch you in the next one. See ya.